my name is Wanda Harper Bush. What is your name, please? My name is Wanda Harper Bush. What is your name, please? My name is Wanda Harper Bush. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Wanda Harper Bush and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Now may I introduce our panel of cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Don Amici. My name is Kitty Carlisle. My name is Jim Backett. Now these three ladies all claim to be Wanda Harper Bush. Only one is the real Wanda Harper Bush. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Panel in front of you, you will find, as usual, copies of an affidavit. Would you kindly follow along with me as I read it? I, Wanda Harper Bush, have spent most of my life around horses. I ride in horse shows and race meets and own the 1955 champion halter mare of the American Quarter Horse Association. The major part of my time, however, has been spent riding in rodeos. I am an expert in barrel racing, calf roping, and ribbon roping. I currently hold the title of World's Champion Cowgirl. Signed, Wanda Harper Bush. As you heard, panel, these ladies all claim to be Wanda Harper Bush, the World's Champion Cowgirl. Only the real Wanda Harper Bush is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear this signal. And at the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real cowgirl. So let's start with Don Amici. Don? Number one, where does the uh, uh, quarter horse name come from? Well, it's about the fastest horse there is. Uh, it can run a quarter of a mile faster than any other horse. Number three, uh, where does the uh, uh, quarter horse name come from? Uh, she was about right. Uh, number two, uh, what is the, uh, what is the fastest time you've ever ridden a horse for a quarter of a mile? In 14 seconds. Uh, number one, what's the fastest time you've ever ridden a horse for a quarter of a mile? 16 seconds. Number three? About 24 seconds. Uh, number, uh, uh, one, what is your best time for calf roping? The best time of day? No. <laughs> uh, number two, what is your what is your best time for calf roping? Number two. It doesn't go on time. Uh, oh, I would say seven seconds. Uh, Kitty. Number one, what is the name of Roy Rogers' horse? Trigger, I believe. <laughs> number two, who is champion? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, is calf riding as bumpy as it looks? I suppose so. <laughs> Number one, can you tell me, do you get paid for riding in race meets or you just do it for trophies? Well, yes, ma'am, you get paid. Number two, how much? Oh. All right, go ahead. How much? How much? How much? For a race meet? Yes. Oh, $500. Thank Jim? You. Uh, number three, it says here that you're a barrel racer. Uh, what's in the barrel? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and what's the racing for? Number two, uh, <laughs> what is your brand? My brand? Yes. Of what? Is what? Of what? <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous territory. <laughs> <laughs> by Go ahead. Uh, I mean by brand uh, that they have the with the iron. On the... Well, I don't have a brand. Oh, you don't. I see. Uh, number one, do you have to make a certain weight for uh, quarter racing? No, no, sir. Holly. Uh, number one, there's a, there's a very big rodeo in, in, in the West that's owned by the Butler brothers. Could you tell me the name, the first name of the brothers? 
No, ma'am, I don't think I can. Number two, could you? No. Number three? The name of the Butler the brothers. The first name of one of the Butler brothers. Leon. Number two, could you tell me what is... I'm getting southern myself now. <laughs> <laughs> could you tell me what is a pole bull? Yes, uh, that's a bull with no horns. Uh, number three, what year did Sam Clark uh, uh, win the champion cowboy title? I don't know Sam Clark. That's it. Time is gone. It's time to vote, panel. So without consultation, as usual, will you mark your ballots? Thereby selecting number one, number two... Or number three. <clears throat> May I remind you that the team of challengers get $250 for every incorrect vote. All set, Polly? Ooh, quick tonight. For whom did you vote? Well, I, I voted for number three. Um, I think mainly because, you know, never at any time during the show did somebody say what brand, and they said brand of what, you know. <laughs> she more or less sort of fell in with the lingo of, of our speech, which was pretty messy at times. So... <laughs> Okay, Don Amici. I voted for number three, because uh, number one and number two said they'd ridden the horse a quarter of a mile in 16 and 17 seconds. That just isn't possible. It has to be closer to 24 seconds. Kitty? I voted for number three because of the uh, timing of the quarter mile I thought was more plausible, but also you must have fooled me. Who was Leon? I thought you asked the question and number three said Leon, and I thought that was right. Well, I only know Roy, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, if you've survived that dialogue, for whom did you vote? Well, I, I voted for, for number two because uh, she's a wonderful straight woman. And, uh, I, I like her answer of the pole bull. I don't, yes, I, I, number two. All right, there you have it now. We've all made our selections. I hope you've made yours at home because we're about to find out which one of these three ladies is the world's champion cowgirl. So will the real Wanda Harper Bush please stand up? Oh. Oh. Thank you very much, Wanda. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Fran McCamish. I'm a housewife, mother of two children, and I live in the Bronx, New York City. <laughs> The Southern Bronx. The Southern Bronx. Southern Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, would you tell us who you are? My name is Jean Baker. I work in the UNIVAC division of Remington Rand. Oh, wow. That's why she gave you those good answers, yes. Jim. You understand? You know it. Well, by checking things <laughs> over here, we find that there was uh, just exactly one uh, incorrect vote for a total of $250 in Geritol. Thanks so much for being with us, ladies. Good night. Best of luck to you. Of our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is John F. Moran. What is your name, please? My name is John F. Moran. What is your name, please? <clears throat> My name is John F. Moran. And you follow along your copies of this affidavit. I, John F. Moran, have money to burn. As the head of the Destruction Committee of the United States Treasury Department, I supervise the destruction of worn paper currency to the tune of $5 billion a year or $25 million every working day. As a specialist in my field, I was sent to Hawaii and England to burn U.S. money. Since I have been in office, I have supervised the destruction of more than $100 billion. Signed, John F. Moran. All right, panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be John F. Moran. Money burner. And let's begin this <laughs> round of cross-examining with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Well, but I don't think I'm going to be able to ask a question. With my predilection for money, this whole subject is repulsive <laughs> to me. <laughs> Burning money. Number one, do you know what um, today, April 15th, is? Yes, I do. What is it? Income tax day. And you're going to burn all that money? 
Aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, how do you burn the money? In incinerators, burners. Just in plain incinerators? Well, they're special, specially guarded, but they're incinerators, there's nothing intricate about them. Number three, uh, how much of a bill do you have to have for it still to be redeemable? How much area? Three-fifths. Three-fifths? That's for to get the whole bill. I see. You can have uh, half a bill, and then if you have an affidavit with it, you uh, can get half the value of it. You can get half the value, but three-fifths mm -hmm. for the whole value. Number That's one, right. can you tell me if all this money-burning causes a split personality at any time? <laughs> it makes you very sad at times. <laughs> Jim Beckett. Number one, are you tired after slaving all day over a hot stove? <laughs> Not too tired, just discouraged. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, uh, tell me, uh, who was Secretary of the Treasury in 1928? That's your boss, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Number three, who was Secretary of the Treasury? Morgenthau. In who? Morgenthau. Morgenthau. Uh, no. Holly? Uh, number one, uh, who signs all currency? There are two signatures on the face of it. One is the Secretary of the Treasury, and the other is the Treasurer of the United States. Number two, what is the name of the Treasury of the United, of the United States? Ivy Baker Priest. Uh, what, is the name of the, uh, what is the name of the new uh, Secretary of the Treasurer? Oh, Robin Anderson. Number three, uh, there is a shield on all bills, and two objects are drawn on the shield. Could you tell me what they are? Well, there's a key, if you mean the uh, shield on the front of the bill. That's right. There's a key and a scale. Uh, number two, uh, how long have you been uh, head of the destruction committee? Thirty years. Uh, uh, number one, what's the average life of a dollar bill? Well, it depends on how much usage it gets from seven, average life. From seven to nine months. Seven to nine months. What's uh, what denomination lasts longest? Number two. The highest denomination. The highest. <laughs> what is the highest? Ten thousand. Uh, number three, can a ten thousand dollar bill be registered with a bank and, and so protected? Yes, it can. Number one, uh, where in uh, Washington, D.C. do you work? I work in the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Where is that in Washington? It's uh, C and 14th Street. C and 14th. Uh, number two, uh, what section of Washington is that in? Southwest. Number three, what section is that in? It's in the Southwest. Uh, guess that's it. Sorry to cut you off, but it's time once more to cast your ballot. And in so doing, of course, vote as before for number one, number two, or number three. All set? How about you, pretty Paul? I'm ready. I'm All right, sure. well, who did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. I must say that as far as the answer to the questions that were asked, uh, that I knew, they all seemed to have a, a great deal of knowledge. Uh, the shield, uh, the object on the shield, seemed to me rather a complicated question. Number three did answer it. I didn't ask anyone else, but I'll have to go along with number three. Okay. Don Amici, your choice. I voted for number one because I'm quite sure C and 14th is northwest. Mm. Kitty? Well, as you can see, I changed my vote. I voted for number one. I thought first it was number three, but I thought number one had more information about where he worked. Like you. <laughs> Nobody noticed his charred fingers, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jim Backus, please. Well, uh, I voted for number three uh, because he seemed so well informed about the, uh, the money, but he didn't know where he worked. And uh, he looks like a fast man with a buck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There you have it again. Now we'll check and see how right or wrong who may be, as we discover now which one of these three gentlemen is the real money burner. So, will the real John F. Moran please... Stand up. No. No. Oh! <laughs> he didn't know anything. He didn't know anything. Fourteen G Southwest. Southwest. Was Mellon Secretary of the Treasurer in 1928? What's the Morgan phone? Well, that's all the time we have for questions. <laughs> Number one, you tell us who you really are and what you do, please. You may sit down, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Harold J. Burke. I'm vice president of Baker Industries, and we manufacture nuclear energy fire detectors and fire alarm systems. <laughs> <laughs>
And uh, number three, what about you, sir? Well, my name is uh, F.K. Scoville. I'm branch manager of the firefighter company, and we make fire extinguishers. <laughs> Well, we really fooled the panel that time. There were exactly four incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 in new bills, gentlemen. You won't have to burn them. Good night and the best of good luck to you. Thank you. Now, uh, we'll need a new set of challengers. Have our next team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Dinsdale. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Dinsdale. What is your name, please? My name is Shirley Dinsdale. Okay, panel, you've had a look. Now, let's have a listen. Please follow along as I read you my copy of this affidavit. I, Shirley Dinsdale, am married and the mother of two children. Formerly, I was in show business. I started as a professional ventriloquist when I was 13 years old and appeared on radio with Nelson Eddy, Bob Burns, Rudy Valley, and Eddie Cantor. In 1947, I was starred in the first commercially sponsored television program on the West Coast. In 1949, I was awarded the first Emmy ever given by the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences as the Outstanding Television Personality of the Year. Signed, Shirley Dinsdale. <laughs> all right, these three ladies all claim to be Shirley Dinsdale, the winner of the very first Emmy Award. And we'll start with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, number three, what does the word Emmy come from? Well, it actually started out to be called Emmy. I don't remember exactly, but it had something to do with the television camera. And um, the lens, I think, was called an Emmy. And then it suddenly became Emmy. Thank you. Number two, could you tell me what mountain in Los Angeles has all the television transmitters on it? I don't know, because it's since I worked there. Uh, number one, could you tell me? Well, um... Uh, Mount Wilson, I believe. Uh, number three, uh, could you tell me what instrument did Bob Burns play? He played a bazooka. Number two, what was his bazooka made of? I think he made it himself out of old scrap metal. <laughs> <laughs> Down to me. Uh, number uh, uh, one, what radio programs did you work with? All of them? Well, just uh, let's say, wh what programs did you work with Nelson Eddy? Oh, uh, I did a series of programs. What, what were they called? Well, it was the Nelson Eddy radio show. Uh, number two, what, what programs did you do with the Nelson Eddy? I did the same ones. I just did guest appearances with him. On what shows? On about four of his shows. Well, what's the name of the shows? Same thing. <laughs> uh, number three, what, uh, what uh, programs did you do with Nelson Eddy? She's right, Nelson Eddy show. Kitty? Number one, why is it called an Emmy Award? <clears throat> I don't remember. Number two, do you remember? Didn't we just talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> do you agree with number three? Oh, yes, it's Ask the Emmy George Con, too. <laughs> well, no, I got it. Uh, what was Eddie Cantor's theme song, number one? I'm not sure. This is so long ago. Number two, could you tell me what Nelson, Ed, what uh, Rudy Valley's theme song was? The main song, Stein song. Stein song. Uh, number three, uh, how do you learn ventriloquism? I don't know how you learn ventriloquism because I was just, or am just a natural. Oh, Jim? Doesn't it say? Mm, number three, uh, ventriloquist. I'd like to sit on your knee, of course. But uh, where, where was the Emmy Award banquet or presentation held that year? At the Hollywood Athletic Club. Number two, where were they held? Hollywood Athletic Club. Who won the outstanding male personality that year, number three? <coughs> There was just an outstanding personality, male or female, and I... I Number two, it. that year, who, who won the, the most famous, the, the, who won comedy, the comedian? I don't honestly remember. Number one, do you know who won the comedian that year? There wasn't any uh, comedian. There wasn't any comedian that uh, year? No, it's the first <laughs> There aren't any comedians now. now. <laughs> 
done and won an award, I guess. Well, it's time once again to vote, panel. So once more, mark your ballots. Voting thereby for number one, number two, or number three. My, you're so fast tonight. Polly, you all set? Yes. Who's your choice this time? I voted for number one. Yeah. Uh, number two didn't know where the transmitters were because she said that was before her time. It was after she'd left. But if she'd left, how did she do a television show there? So that confused me a little. And number one seemed to have sort of an honest, straightforward approach to everything. <laughs> okay, Don, your turn. I voted for number three. Uh, two and one I didn't think were quite as familiar with all the uh, radio things as number three was, and also I caught number two following number three, and I just assumed... <laughs> uh, Kitty, your vote? I voted for number one. Well, I eliminated number two because of the Stein song. I don't think that was correct. Number three said she wasn't a ventriloquist, and in the affidavit it says she was a ventriloquist. No, she said she was a natural. A natural then. Oh, well, all right, I voted for number one anyway. <laughs> and Jim, your selection was? Well, I, uh, I voted for number one. Uh, for no apparent reason, except I didn't see her lips moving too much. <laughs> <laughs> I like her honest, straightforward approach, though. All right, there you have it now. Votes are in, minds are made up. We're about to find out which one of these three ladies is the actual winner of the very first Emmy Award. Now, would you three young ladies please stand up? I asked them to do that, panel, because it's a well-known fact that uh, Shirley Dinsdale and her doll, her ventriloquist doll, Judy Splinters, always dressed in the same identical dress. So I happen to have uh, Judy Splitters right down here, as a matter of fact. I have her here in my arms, and I will uncover her and give her... Ah! There you are. Now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? My name is Barbara McGinnis, and I'm publicity director for White Stag Sportswear. And number three, what about you? My name is Marita Rowland, and I work for the National Society for Crippled Children, the Easter Seal Society. I beg your pardon? Well, don't you want to know my name? Oh, sure, young lady. Who are you? My name is Judy Splinters, and, and I work for... I don't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, uh, we had almost a clean sweep there, our panel. They sort of justified themselves that time. There was only one uh, incorrect vote at $250 for that total from Jarrett Hall. Before I say goodbye to you ladies, since we're talking about the uh, Emmy, first Emmy winner, I'd like to say, uh, Polly, we're all pulling for you tonight for the Emmy Awards this time. Thank good you. luck. <laughs> and good night to you ladies, and thank you very much for being with us. Good night and good luck. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight, except to remind all of you to watch the Polly Bergen Show on Saturday night. And, oh, by the way, there's a wonderful article about Polly in the current issue of Look Magazine. Good night, panel. Good night, good night, bud. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night from Jarrett Hall and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Spurgeons and Miss Carlisle's gowns by Florence Luster. <laughs> Western clothes by Miller Riding Chop, New York City. Good night. Good night.